uh, the national uh, the topic although it may sound a little boring to the students a little dry topic i will try to make it as interesting as possible i will try to link the programs with each other and how the country is actually uh, trying to improve the neonatal mortality rates so all of you are uh, neonatal uh, fellows and are practicing sort of a neonatology. So I'm sure uh, many of you must have taken it by choice. And it's one of my passion and the uniqueness of neonatology is um, uh, multifaceted. First of all, it is dependent on adults and a lot of ethical issues. Management includes integrative management, not only with the obstetricians, but also after the delivery, we have to collaborate with uh, many departments, including ophthalmology, hearing, uh, development. So it is an integrative uh, subject. It affects, I mean, uh, it's uh, nothing new that it affects the human life cycle. We all know anything which happens in the uh, crucial, uh, uh, fragile neonatal period, it can have a lifelong effect. And the precision required for neonatology is actually unique to it. Uh, at the same time, we cannot say that it is restricted to ancestral newborn care or basic newborn care. We are uh, a lot uh, dependent on technology and uh, definitely uh, there is scope of modern medicine, technology, echocardiography. It is futuristic and uh, preventive uh, uh, preventive health has a lot of role uh, again in neonatology a lot of things if you uh, the less you do the more it is as, you, as we say neonates so preventive uh, uh, strategies are really important and of course today we are discussing about the social science and the social aspects of neonatology and it does have a lot of cultural economic and educational impact as well as effect so that is why I begin with this and you will see now that a lot of programs, they are actually integrated, they are interlinked, not only with the sustainable development goals, but also with the maternal programs. So with this background, I begin and just to uh, increase the interest in neonatology, it all actually began in somewhere in 1920s, where the first premature infant center was developed, followed by 1960s, where the idea of having a first special newborn intensive care uh, unit actually developed. And uh, the father of the neonatology is actually Alexander Sheffer, who used the term neonatology the first time. And the story goes on with successful ventilation, surfactant use. And in somewhere around 1960s, 70s, internationally, the neonatal uh, neonatology uh, became recognized as a separate branch or a separate subject apart, I mean, besides the obstetricians who were actually managing the neonates. And in India, uh, in 80s, there was actually a recognition that yes, the neonatal resuscitation, the neonatal mortality, the care of the newborn, it actually requires special care and it cannot be actually um, uh, uh, integrated with uh, so-called, I mean, the labor room. It is actually integration, but then it requires special care. And uh, this survey actually revealed that you see 1987 to 1990, how the progress of neonatology and the evolution of neonatology in Indian neonatal units actually began. So uh, with this, now why should we actually know about health programs? Why should we do that? We are saving the tiniest of babies. We are saving 500 grammars, 400 grammars. We are doing intensive ventilation. We are actually learning a lot of technology. And uh, perhaps we will be able to uh, uh, save the uh, newborns without even knowing the programs. But it is important. You see why it is important? Not only as I so told you in the first slide itself, you have to link it with other uh, care areas. A lot of neonatal care is dependent not only on the mother, but also the home where the newborn goes back, isn't it? To the community where the newborn goes back after discharge and follow up. So you see this is a continuum of care. Neonatology and neonate is always a continuum of care right from antenatal to follow up and rather infancy also. The brain keeps on developing, the lungs keep on developing for the first two years. So be before we begin, why the country has evolved, I mean, high, uh, uh, innovated so many programs and why they are important is we should know when the newborns are dying, why they are dying and where they are dying. Okay, so when they are dying is the day of the birth, the birthday. 
is the actually where the 75% of the deaths happen within the first seven days. And even of those, the first day of life, intrapartum and the just immediate peripartum period is the period where maximum neonatal deaths are occurring, including the stillbirths, which is again, as I say, fresh stillbirths are, in, in another words, they are preventable deaths. Okay. So now what cause, what are the causes of these deaths? The three main killers, we all know, preterm, intrapartum complications, which is birth asphyxia, and of course, neonatal infections, uh, which the lower middle income countries are actually suffering. Now, where are they dying? We should be context specific. And uh, you must have heard the term aspirational units or the empowered action group states. I mean, these are the states, four states. India is a heterogeneous country. Many states are doing so well that their neonatal mortality is comparable to uh, any good international unit like uh, UK, US, Japan, so like Kerala. So you see one on one hand we have Kerala and to give another examples we have few other states which are not doing so well and they contribute to most of the deaths. So the programs and the policies whenever they are formed they do look at the disparity and the variation within the country especially in India where there are 29 states and so many union territories uh, along with it diverse socioeconomic uh, practices and uh, uh, cultural differences. So these all have to be taken into account. And this is important and relevant because you will see the programs, the implementation right from uh, birth till the vaccination and the immunization. They are actually focused on certain areas, certain regions where the deaths are occurring in a maximum number. So this is a, again a continuation of the previous slide that Indian uh, challenges are different. The NMR, as per the latest demographic stats, is uh, high still, 24, if we take the total country uh, neonatal mortality rate. And uh, we have to accept that it contributes to 60% of in infant mortality rate, which is 35 currently, and uh, more than 50% of under-5 mortality. So it has to be recognized that in pediatrics, although pneumonia, diarrhea, malnutrition, these are the causes, but then you see more than 50%, 60% of the infant mortality is contributed by the newborns. So that is where our uh, public health practices, policies, these all come into picture. And variations I have talked about, that there are a lot of variations in the country. So nothing to uh, add on, but this just to stay, uh, tell you that uh, an absolute number, the highest number of neonatal deaths are occurring in India and also the stillbirths. So, uh, as I told you, the maximum deaths are occurring in the first day and 75% in the first seven days. So, the programs, the policies, the national health programs, whenever they are formed, the data is looked at. That when are the maximum deaths occurring and depending on that, the programmatic focus is there. So, just to give you again the numbers, uh, how many lives can be saved, saved by which intervention, you see the maximum uh, intervention, the maximum benefits, uh, the maximum outcome can be uh, actually uh, provided by giving optimal care during the labor and at birth, including the birth related complications. So it, right, it all begins with the timely referral and then identification of high risk pregnancies. So there are challenges and we know there are deaths happening and we know how they are happening, why they are happening and when they are happening. And we also know that some of the interventions, they are existing, but we need to implement them, them and then improve the mortality risk. So the idea behind today's uh, talk or uh, today's uh, national programs is how to actually uh, save the, see these lives based on the data which we have, the baseline data which we have. So uh, though, to begin the story of uh, reduction of neonatal mortality rate, it is not only an Indian, Indian issue, but also a global issue. And uh, you all must have heard the Millennium Development Goals. And whenever there is a global strategy which is formed, that is actually conceptualized as per the context. So I'm beginning with the MDGs, which actually came up in 2001. And they were actually goals which were formed till 2015. So this Millennium Development Goals, we must have heard during our MBBS times or during our, I mean, uh, uh, in the previous uh, decade, 
that there were a lot of uh, goals which were there and goal four was actually reduction in the child mortality and five was improvement in the maternal health. So India was doing uh, efforts, making efforts towards this. And we actually, some of the states did reach the Millennium Development Goals also. I'm not telling about the Millennium Development Goals because now the MDGs have now been, actually the working group has now converted it into Sustainable Development Goals. I'll just enumerate them also. So this is just uh, to tell you the uh, uh, chronology of what happened when, uh, I mean, how the MDGs have now evolved into a Sustainable Development Goals. So Millennium Development Goals were targeted till 2015 and the committees and the UN and the panels, they started meeting in 2012 and then they came up with the Sustainable Development Goals and they expanded it to not only health and not only the uh, poverty and uh, health related uh, hygienic conditions, but also the environment as a whole. So you see, you all must be aware and you all must read the about SDG. In this talk, we may not be actually covering the details of each and every program, but I will sensitize uh, uh, some of the topics and some of the goals and some of the programs to you that how did they come up and what are their actual purpose. So now you see the spectrum of sustainable development goals. It begins with poverty, gender, uh, safe water, pollution, environment conservation, and uh, uh, peace it all covers the uh, in a wholesome manner and where do we come here in the sdg goal 3 uh, we have 3.1 target 3.1 and tar target 3.2 where uh, we have a uh, targeted uh, reduction of global maternal mortality ratio to less than 70 per 1 lakh live births and for newborn and child mortality by 2030 we have to end all the preventable deaths and of children and newborn under 5 years of age so these are the broad targets of the sustainable development goals. So whenever uh, a global uh, strategy comes up, every country has to actually go back, introspect and see how these targets can be achieved in our country, in our nation. So this was the series uh, which came up in the Lancet, every newborn series. So uh, Lancet brings out series in between, which gives us the data. And this data guides us where should the thrust be, the maximum thrust of program should be. So these every newborn series, what did they give us? They gave us the data where they gave us the interventions, they gave us the priority areas, they gave us the uh, data by which we can end preventable deaths. And based on this, actually, every newborn action plan was conceived. So I'm, I'm building up the story just to tell you that every newborn action plan, which is ENAP, it now actually translated to INAP, which is India Newborn Action Plan, and to achieve the and to the uh, to achieve the pillars of INAP, which I'll be talking about, there are multiple multiple programmatic interventions which are there. So this is how this has actually begun MDG, SDG. Now SDG to achieve SDG, we need to have data, we need to have numbers. So there was newborn series which came up then, this every newborn action plan which was co-led by UNICEF and WHO. And it was launched. Uh, it was launched in two thousand fourteen. So ENAP goals are till twenty thirty five, and uh, we have to. Uh, uh, we all uh, actually must be uh, reading or must have uh, read or heard from uh, many experts that we need to have a single digit NMR as per this ENAP goals for twenty thirty five. And not only newborn uh, neonatal mortality, but, but also the reduction of the stillbirths. So the numbers you can actually note down. You need not actually uh, remember it right away. But uh, just remember what the program, the purpose of the program was and how actually we can implement that. So as I said, India then envisioned this every newborn action plan into India newborn action plan. So the concept and the idea behind this was that every pregnancy is to be treated with dignity, every birth has to be uh, preventable, death has to be averted after every birth, and every woman and newborn should reach their full potential. And if you are able to conceptualize this, if you are able to have a broad goal of this, we should be able to achieve single digit NMR and still birth rate. Isn't it so? This was the essence of uh, uh, 
India newborn action plan. And you note the difference that uh, ENAP was till 2035, the target. And for INAP, for India action plan, we are we have targeted ourselves five years ahead of the uh, global uh, every newborn action plan. So these are all the projections which show that how much should be the reduction in the uh, neonatal mortality per year or per five years so that we are able to reach a single digit NMR by 2030. So these are the projected rates. So what do the projected rates give us? They give us a uh, target. Suppose we have to read a chapter in two days. So we have to, and it's a 40, 40 pages chapter. So we have, we have to read 10, tap, 10 pages morning, 10 pages at night. And then again, the next day we have to read 10 more pages. So like that projected decrease has to be in the minds of each country how to actually achieve a single digit NMR. So these are the projections which are there. Again, numbers, you need to recapitulate just before uh, maybe your exam or viva. That is not important. You just have to remember that there are projections which are there by which we actually uh, annually we have a target so that by 2030, every five years, we are able to assess whether we have reached there or not. So all the health programs, they actually uh, uh, give an annual report, give an annual report or annual data, annual numbers. Based on that, we actually uh, decipher whether each state is actually on the road to single digit NMR or not. So these are the projections for the global targets. So there are six guiding principles uh, which actually govern uh, um, uh, the uh, India Newborn Action Plan. And uh, uh, these are the principles, pillars behind that, that it, the care which is there, that should be uh, equity. I mean, equity, you understand, equal and equity is different. Equity is the one who needs it more actually uh, should be getting the uh, benefits irrespective of the gender, the quality of care, convergence and partnerships and collaborations. So these are the guiding principles which are there in uh, uh, INAP and uh, these are called the thumb rules or the pillars. So you see you correlate now. The care of the newborn and the newborn begins right, preconcep right at preconception to antenatal care. We all know that that the uh, quality of antenatal care determines actually the immediate postpartum uh, outcome of the newborn. Care during labor and childbirth, as already told, so many cases referred late and high-risk pregnancies, they are not identified timely, they are referred late. You must also be facing uh, some of the problems in your own institutes, outborn babies, um, they are refer referred late or they are uh, brought late to the referred hospital because of which the baby actually not only has complications short term as well as long term, but also mortalities, right? And then immediate newborn care for which I will tell you some of the programs, facility-based newborn care, Navjash issue program. So you just remember these pillars and we will try to link the programs with these pillars. Care of the healthy newborn. A baby may be totally healthy, but if he's not uh, provided essential newborn care, he's not provided vitamin K timely, he's not provided vaccinations timely, he's not immunized properly, or the jaundice is not identified timely. So he may land up in uh, as a sick newborn, isn't it? So care of the healthy newborn is one of the pillars. Care of the small and sick newborns and care beyond the survival, which includes not only intact survival, Primary referral because uh, you see uh, early identification of minor abnormalities or developmental delays and early intervention can actually go a long way in improving the daily activities of the uh, baby. So care beyond survival is also one of the components and it includes immunization, not only immunization, early, inter early intervention. And based on these principles, I'll try to link the programs. So this is just to show that um, uh, how we are, uh, the government actually uh, uh, sets the targets for just like we do our thesis or just like we do our uh, projects or studies or research, uh, we do have interim analysis. So that way, if you see the government for each program also, it has a mid-course review. Where are we going? What road are we taking? What is the path we are taking? And similarly, the INAP also has a, a milestones which has mapped. And in 2020, we were expected to have a reviewed or the updated INAP as per the latest mortality rates. And we are expecting that yet.
so how to achieve i mean how to achieve these pillars and how to achieve these things so this was the uh, this was the story or this was the um, uh, what to say uh, the background from mdg sdg that how the neonatal mortality reduction can be achieved and what is india doing now so till 2017 we had five year plans and we had five, 12 five year plans till 2017 Uh, which actually for uh, each five years, India used to set the targets for uh, the country and was committed to achieve these goals. So post two thousand seven, this planning uh, five year plans were actually given to the think tank of now uh, the government, which is Niti Aayog, and now Niti Aayog is bringing out uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, different packages. apart from the five year plans now the five year plan uh, the 13 five year plan has not come but uh, we have uh, the, on based on the same principle the principle is universal health uh, care universal health coverage based on that uh, you should uh, read up and you should know about the national health policy and also the pmj or the ayushman uh, uh, bharat the flagship program of uh, our government where there are two components of this um, uh, ayushman bharat or national health policy so the five year plans have now been composed or compiled into and some new innovations have come up so now we don't have five year plans but we do have uh, certain milestones and health policies which are there so what this ayushman bharat has done is it has actually combined the primary health care and it has combined the primary health care with the insurance uh, yojana or the insurance plans so the ones the poor ones who can actually access primary health care primary health centers the areas which do have primary health centers uh, it plans to strengthen those primary health centers and the areas where they don't have uh, enough primary health centers and they have a public private sort of uh, institutes or healthcare uh, facilities there the government is supporting by giving them insurance in the form of pradhan mantri jan aarogya yojana or pmj it gives financial protection and of course there are certain uh, prerequisites that they should have <clears throat> below poverty line cards and uh, everything uh, should be there documented it should be there so this is what is national health policy or the pmj or the ayushman bharat and remember that there are two components primary care strengthening and financial protection so you see it takes care of um, uh, the pyramid of primary health care where there is a system which is already there plus it tries to outreach the secondary and the tertiary health centers the government as well as the pi private centers and uh, uh, they uh, aim to provide financial protection there is a certain amount of uh, uh, budget which is allocated and there is a certain amount of limit which is there which you should actually go into the details and read up it can come as a short note or gen in general also you should be aware as a neonatologist that what's happening and how the newborns can actually benefit from these programs so of course it ensures the continuum of care from primary till tertiary now this continuum of care now continuum of care this was one part this is a broader part till now what we have seen the broader part of how the country is actually trying to form a policy broader policy of uh, providing support that was not specific to perhaps newborn newborn package is there but then there is a broader umbrella under which now we are entering into a newborn programs specific to newborns so you should all know those sdgs and pmj and ayushman bharat because newborn packages are there inside that but then coming to the specific newborn health programs so uh, as i have been saying right from inap that is india newborn action plan it begins with the preconception antenatal intrapartum and then continues till post uh, neonatal care or the follow up care now another linkage another continuum we should be there is community and the uh, tertiary health care center you see india is a diverse country and we know there are villages there are remote areas there are peripheral health centers and there are peripheries from where maybe it is difficult for the sick newborn to reach time i mean reach timely rather a mother to reach timely so the linkage has to be both ways from the preconception to the follow up care and the second linkage should be community and facility and vice versa facility and community okay you have discharged the baby then but then he goes back home so how to strengthen the community how to actually strengthen the care at community level 
So uh, that was the purpose of this slide. And with this aim, uh, the government actually brought about the reproductive and child health program. So don't get confused with the names because um, uh, as and when there are additions to the program, the names actually undergo some modifications. So this actually started with child survival and safe motherhood program in 1992, where actually they combined diarrhea, pneumonia, plus resuscitation and safe delivery kits. It gradually evolved into RCH. RCH means people realized that reproductive tract infections, STIs, they are one of the important components and they can actually be a preventable cause of newborn mor morbidity and mortality. Then in 2005, NRHM or the National Rural Health Mission came in which we actually tried to bring the peripheral mothers to institute. So there were cash incentives which are there that the mother who gets delivered at the institute or the hospital, she will be provided some incentive. And then there were introduction of accredited uh, social health workers or ASHAs, which you must have heard a lot, even during your PSM postings and MBBS also. So those are, are actually, um, uh, what to say, um, backbone or the holding point of at the villages village level. So these names changed from 1992 to 1997, 2005, then 2011, uh, it again evolved and covered from maternal to newborn. And then we are again uh, including now adolescents into those. Okay, so this actually shows you the pathway of how this continuum of care actually evolved with gradual addition. Hmm? So I, I took the name of NRHM. So I just wanted to tell you what is NRHM. So this universal health coverage concept was there since beginning. And to have this universal health coverage, uh, national health mission was formed. So first of all, there people thought that, okay, we need to reach the rural areas. So National Rural Health Mission came up in 2005. But then people realized and country realized that urban slums are there. So there also morbidity and mortality are occurring. Those people are also not able to reach the facility. So it actually combined National Urban Health Mission in 2013. And both of these actually uh, were, uh, what to say, merged together to form the National Health Mission, Total National Health Mission. And the idea was to again have a wholesome and integrated care. So they plan to strengthen the health system. You see the concept behind remains almost the same. You have to strengthen the health system. You have to provide continuum of care right from reproductive age till adolescent period. And also take care of the communicable and non-communicable diseases. So again, this umbrella of NHM is there. National Health Mission is there under which newborn and maternal programs are there. Now coming to the preconceptional and the maternal programs or the antenatal programs, then we'll go to the newborn programs as a whole. Okay, in uh, I mean uh, in detail. So just to enumerate, I know there are a lot of them, but uh, again I will try to uh, highlight or uh, sensitize you to the ones which are actually happening and are the key programs which are there. So uh, you should remember the names, uh, hear about the names, uh, search some more details and then make notes for yourself. So Janani Suraksha Yojana is one. Pradhan Mantri Surakshit Matritva Abhiyan is one. I'll tell you uh, some points about these in coming slides. Then Suman is one in 2019. Then coming to the labor room, infrastructures and manpower. Laksha, Dakshata and Kilkari and you see our government is also going uh, uh, techno driven and there are a lot of online uh, facilities which are being utilized now. So these were the key ones apart from this, uh, those, uh, the ones uh, which are there in the background uh, or back, not to say background but they are running parallelly along with these programs which is midwifery initiative. The normal, the low risk pregnancies have to be attended by at least a trained person. Obstetric development of and uh, operationalization of the obstetric HDUs and ICUs. This is very important to prevent the postpartum complications and deaths. Maternal death surveillance and response. It was actually strengthened. And now you must be actually aware that each maternal death actually goes to a lot of audit and a lot of, um, uh, what to say, detailed analysis uh, so that we can actually prevent these deaths. Uh, care of not only pregnancy, we know the interpregnancy interval is very important. So comprehensive abortion care, if uh, it is an uh, aseptic or uh, septic uh, abortion, then you know that the obstetric history will be affected for the mother. Screening and care of the uh, STDs, 
the maternal and the child protection card uh, many details i will try to share in the whatsapp also if there uh, there is a scope because it's a very um, uh, long topic maternal and child protection card is a pink color card and it actually gives from the preconception the mother's weight the bmi the diet and it continues till the baby's uh, full primary immunization that is 18 months to 2 years of age then we have anemia mukt bharat and then iec and bcc what is this any program to be successful we need to have information education communication Plus, most important is BCC, which is behavior change and communication. So, uh, you see the maternal and child health actually depends a lot on the social uh, and the cultural practices. And we need to target the behavior change uh, in the society to actually uh, help us in supporting the reduction of maternal and the uh, neonatal mortality. So, coming to uh, the important programs individually. So, Janani Suraksha Yojana. So, uh, some of you who are actually uh, well versed with Hindi, you must be knowing that Janani Suraksha Yojana, Janani means mother. So, and Suraksha means protection. So, safe motherhood. So, this was the plan or the intervention which was launched under NRHM somewhere back around 2005 where the NRHM was actually conceptualized. And it was actually, I told you there are a lot of modifications in the name. There was a plan existing, which is National Maternity Benefit Scheme. It was a modification of that. So what is that? As I said, there was a cash assistance or incentive which was given to all the mothers who delivered at the institute. And they also identified, the country also identified low performing states and high performing states. Now, why is it important? Similar to a classroom which has, uh, uh, what to say, students who are actually doing good and some of the students who need some support. So what do we do? We give them more incentive, not the average or what to say, the lower performing students. We give them uh, more attention, more incentive. So same is the uh, principle behind this. The low performing states, that means who are baseline delivery rates were less than 25%, institutional delivery rates. Those, the packages were uh, slightly uh, um, uh, kept higher. Uh, both for the health worker as well as for the mother. And the high-performing states, they were already motivated, maybe the social uh, uh, and the cultural practices, the educational status, the literacy rates, uh, all those were different. So the incentives are a little... Uh, I won't uh, go into the details, but you just remember that the incentives are for the ASHA. ASHA is a... Uh, I have a slide on that also, that ASHA is a honorary worker. The work she does, she gets paid for that. And so that is why each work which she does, like bringing a mother and completing the newborn uh, services, she'll get certain incentives. So these are the incentives which were there and the incentives were higher uh, in the low-performing states, kept higher. So this was Janani Suraksha Yojana, which cash, cash transferred linked to the antenatal care during pregnancy, institutional delivery, and also remember immediate postpartum care in healthcare facility. It's not like the delivery happens and she goes back within two hours. So they made sure that post postpartum care also has to be given in the uh, healthcare facility. Uh, the next maternal program, which is actually uh, on the flagship or uh, uh, the governmental initiative is the Pradhan Mantri Surakshit Matritva Abhyan. So every ninth of every month, and there was a lot of uh, information, education, and uh, there were a lot of advertisements also which were uh, propagated that uh, this program aims to provide safe and comprehensive care to all pregnant ladies. And uh, on ninth of every month, they could actually uh, access to the minimal package of antenatal care, which included general checkup, some ultrasound facilities. An important component of this program is identification and follow-up high-risk pregnancies. So you see the moment uh, uh, you identify a high-risk pregnancy early, so there are definitions, there are certain checklists which actually give the healthcare providers and the peripheral health centers that who is a high-risk pregnancy. And it is much simplified list like BP, weight, I maybe the baby, uh, the uterus or the uh, uh, uterus size is not growing as per the uh, menstrual uh, date. So those things. So they were given, the healthcare providers were given a green and the red sticker and they used to actually, they have to actually identify a high-risk pregnancy timely. So that was the aim and it was launched in 2016. After that, there came in 2019, Surakshit Matritva Ashwasan. 
So Ashwasan means reassuring a mother. So what do we reassure the mother about? That yes, there will be do zero, zero tolerance for any negligence. So this was a conceptual ideation which was there and it integrated all the existing in initiatives which was JSY, JSY which I told you and previously I told you about the antenatal checkups which is this one, Matrit Visuraksha uh, Abhyan. So they... Uh, integrated the existing initiatives, including the labor room, quality care and all. And the background and the whole umbrella of this program is that none of the, no mother should be actually refused care during pregnancy. And the mother should have respectful care with autonomy, dignity, her own choice. And reporting of every maternal death. And as I told, detailed audit. So these were the components which were added to Suman or the Ashwasan program. Ashwasan means that yes, your uh, grievances would be heard. Every death has to be brought up to the authorities. And then there is a feedback mechanism there. As we have seen in quality improvement initiatives, champions are awarded. So uh, these were the uh, uh, components, what to say, for the Suman, which is a Surakshit Matritva Ashwasan. That means the whole pregnancy is actually assured of any negligence, of lack of any negligence. Okay, so uh, uh, integrating it with the uh, skills and empowering the providers, uh, we had Dakshita. And uh, this started somewhere in Gatsholi in uh, Maharashtra that um, they had a strategy that we should strengthen the quality of intra and immediate postpartum care. So till now it was an umbrella of care. Now we are coming to the intra and immediate postpartum care. So that those two programs were right from the preconceptional identification of high risk antenatal. So this Dakshita actually ensured that in the labor room, actually intra and immediate postpartum care is provided and they had uh, outlined certain objectives. You must be seeing that there is a certain overlap, but then each program has a defined objective and a defined uh, outcome. So these are all interlinked. You cannot do well without uh, uh, without a Lakshya program. You cannot do complete the care with without Dakshata where the skills and the strengthening of uh, practices is there as a objective of this program. So this is one of the maternal programs, and these are these have a direct uh, uh, direct effect on the newborn care. So you all should remember these things. Uh, then in uh, uh, this Lakshya ideation was going on right from uh, uh, this 2016 only and it materialized and the whole module came up on 11 December 2017. So Lakshya is all about, you see the Q in red. So that Q means that there has to be a quality care which is, has to be provided in all the delivery areas. So if you look at the, in, there is, th these modules are freely accessible on the internet and the Google. So I'm not sharing much of the details. I just want you to synthesize and uh, just remember in your minds that yes, this program was this. If you remember the, this this way, then the objective objectives and the dashboard indicators that you can actually remember easily. So Dakshata was all about strengthening the skills and the supplies and all. The Lakshya is actually going a little ahead and it is about improving the quality of birth uh, care around birth. And it also has neonatal targets like breastfeeding initiation, skin to skin care initiation in the first hour, respectful care, presence of birth companion. So all these are dashboard indicators. We have a Lakshya register or the Lakshya uh, documentation. And in every hospital now, there are uh, uh, champions who are being awarded. There are checklists which are being uh, uh, followed. There is a data which is being followed. So we have a register, a Lakshya documentation register in which we have to document the antenatal steroid received or not, birth asphyxia, APGAR scores, whether the supplies were there or not, number of AMBU bags and the self inflating bags which are there, whether the mother had a separate bed, a birth companion was present or not. And all these dashboard indicators, at least 75% of the targets have to be met in the first two, uh, two years of initiation of Lakshya. So Lakshya is not only processes, but also the infrastructure. So it actually is a wholesome improvement in the quality care. So uh, under the Lakshya program, we also have LDR concept where the labor and the delivery area is the same. So most of the times what happens, the mother is laboring in another uh, corridor or in the, another room. And then when she's delivering, she's brought into the uh, delivery area. So LDR concept is also brought up uh, under this Lakshya. 
<coughs> initiative. So now, uh, uh, now we have uh, improved the quality. So I am going towards the technology part now. So government has actually utilized the online component and also the you know, mobiles, uh, the social media. So Kilkari is one such program where mobile health updates are given for mother and child. It was actually launched in Hindi in Bihar in 2013. And it delivers free time appropriate audio messages to the pregnant women about the pregnancy, childbirth, and also has interactive voice response. Uh, like you must be seeing in many, many conferences and all, you have a chatting uh, interactive voice response and a chatting response, which is there. So this actually utilizes uh, interactive voice response on the mobile phone. And there are very uh, structured weekly pre-recorded messages which are uh, provided. So this is a mobile based, uh, uh, both for mother as well as neonatal care. There are messages which are there. So uh, these were the key maternal programs, which I felt were actually relevant to the uh, newborn care directly. So these were uh, um, uh, the maternal and the neonatal so-called integrated programs. Now coming to the newborn related programs. So newborn related programs, if you think logically, it has to begin with the preconception and go on till the uh, follow-up. So how do we improve that? So promotion of institutional deliveries and essential newborn care. That was one of the components. Home-based newborn care. Because we felt that when these programs started in 2005 and 2008, uh, a lot of uh, uh, deliveries were still happening uh, at home, not in the institutes. If you see the new surveys and the new NFHS data, which I'll just show you in the end, the institutional deliveries have improved a lot. It has actually reached 80% in many states. But uh, when the program started, a lot of deliveries were happening at home. So home-based newborn care. Not only deliveries were happening at home, but those who were delivered at institute, they also need to be followed up. Na? They will get discharged. A normal newborn will get, get discharged at 48 hours. So what? What um, after that, what happens? A low birth weight newborn can be discharged at two weeks, three weeks. But after that, we need to provide some care. So till 42 days of age. And then again, Asha was brought into picture. So this was the home-based newborn care, which was uh, uh, conceptualized. Then uh, it uh, uh, home-based and community care has to be linked with facility-based care. So these four programs which are here, these are actually linked to facility-based care. The Navjas Shishu Suraksha Karikram, Janani Suraksha Yojana. It has now been envisaged to include uh, what to say newborns. So it is it has now one another S, which is Shishu. Janani Shishu Suraksha Karikram. Then facility-based programs like IMNCI. FIMNCI, facility-based newborn care, and provision of skilled care at birth, not only at the tertiary hospitals, but also at the primary health care centers. So taking forward the JSY, JSY was Janani Shishu uh, Yojana. We now come to Janani Shishu Suraksha Karikram. So JSY was somewhere launched with NRHM, na, somewhere around 2005-06. So once they saw that, yes, cash incentives worked, Mothers were coming into the institutes. So they extended this why the mother alone should benefit. The newborn is along with the mother. Mother, newborn, dyad is the uh, same. I mean, they have to be looked after together. So it uh, it was launched in 2011. And the initial component continued. The pregnant uh, woman should be getting, uh, who was delivering at the institute, should have free and no expense delivery. She should be given free drugs, consumables, free diet and diagnostics. And initially, all sick newborns up to 30 days were included for all these provisions. So uh, those who are working in public, cell, uh, public health centers or public-private um, private partnership sort of hospitals, uh, they have a scope that, yes, transportation, diagnostics, if something is shortage in the hospital, you can actually procure through this program. And initially, we included neonates till 30 days only. But then in 2013, it was extended to infants up to one year of age. So the beneficiary is now infants up till one year of age. So continuing with this, we have Navja Shishu Suraksha Karikram, uh, which was uh, launched in 2009, somewhere between JSY and then JSSK. Now, why NSSK? Now, NSSK is uh, a program. We have different level of healthcare. Again, I'll uh, discuss it. What are the levels of healthcare? 
So the peripheral health centers and the community health centers, uh, they cannot cater to all the high-risk newborns, isn't it? So the concept of sick newborn or the special newborn care centers, SNCUs, came up. And even in the SNCUs, uh, uh, there are centers where only newborn corner is there. So newborn corner actually caters to uh, only resuscitation till basic, maybe self-inflating bag and use of bag and mask ventilation, vitamin K provision, initiation of breastfeeding, and timely referral. So this was the functions of a newborn corner compared to the uh, district hospitals where we had SNCUs, where even a sicker newborn was taken care of. And above that, we have tertiary care hospitals where facility-based newborn care is provided. So NSSK catered to an algorithm, resuscitation algorithm, uh, which catered to the NBSU, which is newborn corner and the newborn stabilizing unit uh, where resuscitation was provided. And it was a structured one algorithm. It was not too uh, detailed. It was not too much based on the uh, science. It was stepwise procedure as to what is to be done now. Heart rate less than 100, heart rate more than 100. What is to be done? When is to the baby to be referred? When our expert has to be called? So it is a simplified algorithm, updated algorithm. And the training program actually caters to the healthcare providers, the nurses, and the medical officers. It is a two. It is a two-day classroom training. So the idea behind NSSK is a training package which it customized to uh, the centers where maybe the expert pediatrician and the neonatologist are not there. So we need to train them somehow, isn't it? So we need to train them to at least uh, uh, conduct a basic resuscitation and have the capacity to refer them timely in an appropriate manner. So these are the skills which are planned under NSSK or Navjat Shishu Suraksha Karikram. So this was the primary facility. The basic facilities where the newborn stabilizing uh, unit is there and the newborn corner is there, there we actually implement the NSSK training. Now, if the baby is coming to district hospital or a tertiary care hospital, we have certain modules for them also. There also, uh, there may not be expert neonatologists who are there who have uh, studies the science and the concepts behind neonatology. So, but there is an integrated management which is taught to them. And initially, we, it started as integrated management of childhood illness. The child, uh, In the earlier days, childhood included newborn. So as, as uh, I mean, as and when the newborn importance of neonatology, the specific care of a newborn is, was realized, this was converted to IM and CI, Integrated Management of Childhood and Neonatal Illnesses. And then it converted to, it not converted, but it evolved into Facility-Based Integrated Management, FIM and CI. So this IM and CI was catering to uh, uh, all the health centers, not specific to a uh, tertiary care center. So facility-based integrated management of neonatal and childhood illness went a step ahead. In, it included a lot of calculations, a lot more uh, precision in management of uh, newborns. So IM, IMCI, IMNCI, facility-based newborn care. And then now in the COVID era and the digital uh, era, we have a digital learning package also for FIMNCI, which the book has been converted to that. So now FIMNCI, as you can see, it includes both the newborn and the childhood. Now, people felt that those who are working in the newborn unit or in the delivery area or in the labor room area, they are uh, maybe uh, bombarded with a lot of knowledge with childhood illnesses also. So a customized module for newborns was brought up, which is facility-based newborn care, along with linked with home-based newborn care. So it catered, as I was telling till now, it catered to different levels of newborn care, which is newborn care corners, newborn stabilization units, and special care units. So newborn care corners are the basic primary health center, community health centers, where uh, if a delivery is happening there, so a newborn should be resuscitated timely. Newborn stabilization units are a step ahead of that, where maybe uh, phototherapy is there, uh, IV fluids can be given. And special newborn care unit again has a little more advanced facilities at district hospital level and sometimes in medical colleges also we have special newborn care units where all sorts of CPAP now is being included. So all these things are now a package. So this uh, covers the, uh, what, what, what part does it cover? It covers the intrapartum, peripartum and the immediate postpartum period of the newborn. So 
if you remember the pillars which we have we're trying to link it with the pillars of india newborn action plan we are now at the level where the newborn has received resuscitation it is safe in the hands of uh, uh, the trained personnel uh, with all these modules it has now passed into the immediate postpartum period so now comes the screening part and the prevention part of uh, delays so rbsk or rashtriya bal swasthya karyakram is there in which uh, it has you must have read there are four d's which are covered you know, defect and developmental delays so there are four d's which form uh, the core of this rashtriya bal swasthya uh, karyakram and under this only we have a lot of sub programs running like birth defect surveillance prevention of rop early intervention centers and district uh, at district hospitals so idea is to have a wholesome a comprehensive follow up care and intervene early and the uh, recruitment or the policy or the program includes uh, recruiting psychologist child psychologist uh, physiotherapist so under one roof the plan is that these early intervention centers should be able to provide Uh, care to the babies so that their daily activities are improved there is no dependency so the disability is to be limited so again this program uh, has outreach uh, activities like we are trying to again asha uh, worker is doing a lot of work and every program component where village and the peripheral health centers are there we have to take help from the ashas where already existing home visits are there from birth to 42 days of life or 6 weeks of life so these programs are all integrated and then they are told that yes you have to identify these red flag signs you have to tell them and refer them early and also using the mobile health teams and the uh, technology social media and the technology so uh, these were about the first few days and the first neonatal period uh, the important component of newborn is nutrition so the uh, focus of uh, the uh, government and the uh, honorable prime minister has been uh, nutrition not only in the newborn period also in the infancy and the uh, in, in the first 5 years so poshan abhiyan remains one of a larger program and it in itself is a bigger program and sub headings of poshan abhiyan and sub targets of poshan abhiyan include nutrition of the low birth weight newborn also and uh, under this only there are lactational management units lmu is lactational management units and comprehensive lactational management center so clmc and lmu to provide uh, support for mother's milk so these are actually milk banks uh the names of the uh, uh the technical names of the milk bank which we called so lactation management unit is one where the milk is actually uh, donated and uh, uh, stored but clmc the comprehensive lactation management uh, center is a bigger one it actually pasteurizes it takes for checks for decontamination it sends the cultures it stores it properly so these are actually hub and spoke model so hub is clmc and there are a lot of lmus which are going uh, from the uh, which are uh, under the support of clmc so mothers are uh, lmus can be opened in a smaller area and clmc needs to have a, a larger area larger staff number of staff and then um, it has to be operated in a certain way and we have modules available for that so these uh, two are actually a programs uh, in itself they have a lot of standard operating procedures and lot of targets and objectives so uh, but they are definitely relevant to the newborn uh, health so i have just named and i will just discuss few which are directly related to newborn so uh, in the first year national deworming day anemia mukt bharat program again where 90 days of iron supplementation is advised for infants as well as in the first 5 uh, years of life uh, uh, vitamin a as i was saying if you are not giving vitamin k vitamin a if you are not preventing the diseases then a healthy newborn may land up into deficiency so these are actually targeting uh, uh, the babies uh, where uh, we feel that in lower middle income countries uh, 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 mothers are already uh, are deficient in very uh, i mean micronutrients so these are important for neonatal health 
and uh, immunization we have two or three programs which i'll just uh, uh, tell a few points about those and then nutrition related is uh, ma and iipcf so nutrition related you remember two or three programs micronutrient related you should remember these three programs and a bigger umbrella of actually supporting the nutrition is portion abhyan and lmus and clmcs so ma ma is what is ma ma is mother's absolute affection program so there are a lot of initiatives for breastfeeding and none of us are here who don't i mean who doesn't know the importance of breastfeeding and uh, i think every pediatrician uh, every obstetrician knows that how important the breast milk is but then why do we need so many programs no so we felt that from the data uh, the demographic data and the surveys and the annual data which we get we see that uh, the breastfeeding rates are actually uh, have a lot of scope of improvement exclusive breastfeeding rates may be reporting reportedly they are 50% but in actual reality if you see at the centers it is actually 30% initiation of breastfeeding in the first one hour that has still not reached uh, up to the expectations so this program was an intensified program which was an attempt to have an undiluted focus on promotion of breastfeeding aisa nahi hona chahiye it is running parallel ha ha feeding bhi kara dena you do feeding also but then you do this so this is to actually have a focus on uh, intensification of promotion of breastfeeding and uh, uh, you see there are uh, it it was implemented at three levels and a lot of mass media was used and communities were also uh, included so these are the four just um, a second i think this is interfering with the screen <clears throat> yeah it was launched in 2016 and uh, uh, the main components are uh, awareness generation through mass media going to the communities linking the community with the uh, facilities again utilizing the ashas anganwadi workers health facility strengthening if the mother comes with any uh, issue breastfeeding issue how the facility can actually uh, help reinforce it should not be an easy access to uh, alternative feeding isn't it and then again rewarding the champions and monitoring so these were the key principles uh, and an intensified approach was planned at, uh, under this mothers absolute affection program okay so now uh, extended component of extended uh, what to say program of this is uh, iycf which was existing a lot before this and the principles or the pillars of infant and young child feeding is that uh, a set of well known and recommended practices whether to give sugar whether to give salt so these are a well known and recommended by experts appropriate feeding practices for newborn and not only newborn but also complementary feeding which is very very important the sixth pillar which you remember care beyond survival so now, now now the newborn has survived he has breastfed for the first six months after that what happens so these are the optimal infant and young child feeding practices it starts with breastfeeding initiated within first one hour then exclusive breastfeeding and then going on to complementary feeding and of course within the first two years if somebody has seen the iycf module you must have seen it actually gives you how to make the complementary feed how thick it should be what should be the consistency what should be the components how to introduce each cereal so it gives a structured information the iycf module the second component which i told uh, care beyond survival is immunization so to strengthen the routine immunization indra dhanush initiative indra dhanush means rainbow so we have seven colors in rainbow so seven preventable diseases so uh, there were uh, uh, definitely some targets which were kept uh, in terms of dashboard indicators that okay these regions should, should reach 65% these regions uh, should reach 90% of uh, uh, coverage so there were uh, regionalized targets which were kept okay so why did i bring polio here because you see this uh, indra dhanush which it when it came up one of the strategy was polio end game strategy there may be a, a, a note which may come up that how india achieved polio eradication or polio how did it become polio free 
So that is why I included uh, some of this. And it is very interesting and a proud moment for this that uh, the end game strategic plan, which was planned between 2013 to 18, actually worked. And this was the switch which we did from uh, trivalent OPV to bivalent. And we introduced the um, injectable polio vaccine also. So just for our own information that India was certified polio free by uh, uh, the Regional Polio Certification Commission in 2014. And the last case was uh, reported in uh, from West Bengal. So why do why does India still holds the National Immunization Days and the Pulse, uh, Pulse Polio Program and the Subnational Immunization Days every year? It is to actually provide additional protection, injectable polio also for individual protection because uh, there are wild polio viruses which are still reported from neighboring countries. And as with any disease, as long as even a one even one child remains infected, there is a risk that all countries with so much travel and so much uh, uh, intercontinental traveling happening, uh, all the countries remain at risk. So that is why we are still continuing to hold uh, NIDs. So this was MNTE, which may again come up uh, um, as a uh, uh, a question or something that how did tetanus get eliminated so it was a program which was uh, uh, eliminated uh, targeted at elimination of the tetanus in 2016 and not only tetanus it was also yours free so just remember the name mnte which is one of the components of the national program so uh, mission intradhanush i have told you and i just wanted to bring one or two points here that i also told you about uh, the regionalized targets somewhere it was 65 percent then it increased to 90 percent coverage and you know that uh, we talked about the aspirational units and the high focus uh, uh, states to so the states of uttar pradesh with 55 high focus districts and bihar they accounted for missed opportunities in immunization. So these were the focus areas for uh, Mission Indra Dhanush. And this Mission Indra Dhanush was intensified recently. And in 2023, there were three rounds of uh, intensified Indra Dhanush which were carried out with special focus on improvement in measles and of measles and rubella vaccination coverage. Plus, there are four more vaccines which were introduced in the select areas, Japanese encephalitis, rotavirus, PCV, and MR vaccine. So, and also the age of the children was increased till five years, which was previously till two years of age. So, all this coverage was ensured till five years of age. So, this is, and then uh, one more digital platform was brought in, which is UBIN digital platform. Many of the hospitals may be using it. UBIN digital program uh, platform was launched. Many sisters and many doctors have been trained in it for routine immunization. Just like we had maternal audit now, so we have child death review program. So this is very, very important. And it is common knowledge that the deaths in hospitals actually indicate why the deaths are occurring, whether the deaths are because of the regional disparities which are there, because of the institutional local problem, or is it a social and the global and a community level problem. So child death review is very important. And we do have verbal autopsies also, the deaths which are occurring at community also. We try to outreach them and try to find the closest uh, cause of death. So what does it do? It helps not only to audit us, audit ourselves, but also to initiate specific health instruction, interventions. If a region is uh, facing deaths due to the birth asphyxia, higher rates of birth asphyxia, we need to intervene there. Versus a region where sepsis-related deaths are more versus a region where premature deaths are more. So the interventions will be specific for that specific uh, uh, region. So I just wanted to tell that a lot of organizations and collaborations are happening with WHO, USAID, and there are a lot of steps in mortality audit. So you can just go through them. And there are, these are available at uh, uh, in the Google. So just to summarize, uh, I showed you the first graph that where the deaths were happening. So, and I have told you many programs. Now you must be uh, uh, sort of familiar with the short forms. So these are the high impact interventions, JSY, NSSK, Navjad Shishu, home-based newborn care, facility-based care, which includes Janani Shishu, Suraksha Karikram, FM and CI. So these are the care points and these are the high impact interventions, which have been published also, again, uh, in the Lancet. So uh, what are the implementation rules? We have seen the components of various programs. Who implements them? 
I have been talking about Asha Anganwadi, Asha Anganwadi. So they are a support in many, many states for us. And whatever program is launched, the peripheral component till first six weeks, first three months, the red flags, development, immunization, newborn visits, identification of danger signs. So all these components, home-based newborn care, these are taken care by the healthcare providers who are actually the backbone in our uh, peripheral health centers. Plus, at the facility, we are supported by uh, various standards, like we are working at medical college. So what are the standards which you follow? What are the infrastructure, minimum infrastructure which we should have? What are the minimum manpower we should have? So there are certain uh, 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 guides, MUSCAN, NQAS, which is National Quality Assurance Standards, and IPHS, which gives us guidelines that, yes, these are the standards to be followed. Asha ke baare mein, I think you will get a lot of information, uh, but you should remember, and whenever you get a, a viva or any question, uh, you should just uh, remember that she is a key component in most of the health programs, and performance-linked incentives are there. For delivery, she gets such amount. For a newborn visit, she gets so much amount. For immunization, she gets such amount. So maximum, it, it is made sure that at least 3,000 per month she earns in a population of around 1,000 in, in an urban area. A rural area, he, she may be earning more, but this is the least uh, minimum which she is actually uh, capable of earning. And of course, she's supported by the Anganwadi workers the nurse midwifery, as well as the doctors, medical officers who are there in the uh, periphery. So I told you about the community level uh, implementation at the facility level. There are certain quality assurances and MUSCAN is one such uh, program which ensures that child-friendly services are provided at all public health facilities. The key components are again uh, interlinked that already existing evidence-based protocols are there but we need to strengthen the implementation of them. Plus, we need to give dignity and patient-friendly and family-centered care. That is one of the uh, pillars. And then follow-up and referral. Suppose it's happening at the district hospital, then how do you refer them to the earliest intervention center? How do you refer them to the highest, I mean, uh, next medical college or a next higher tertiary center? And the key uh, background remains respectful and dignified care, not only to mother, but to any patient who comes, to any child who comes there. So IPHS is in Indian Public Health Standards, which again is a big document, which provides a set of uniform standards, uh, which kind of warmer should be used, how many warmers, how many plug points, which kind of uh, manpower should be there. So they were first developed in 2005 and then they, revi they were revised subsequently. And they have different guidelines for different levels of healthcare, including sub center, primary healthcare center, community healthcare center, district hospitals, as well as tertiary care hospitals. Plus, they also provide the how, uh, about the manpower strength, how many nurses should be there, how many uh, midwives should be there, how many technicians should be there, how many uh, safai karmacharis should be there, how many doctors should be there, plus services which need to be provided. So there is a tabular form which is there uh, given for uh, each of the centers. So just to give you an idea, I talked about the facility-based newborn care. I brought it up here because IPHS gives uh, a specific uh, guideline for each of the care. So this is NBCC, which is a plain newborn care uh, center where only warmer is there. And we need to provide basic resuscitation here. Okay, you see there is suction, there is air point. NBU is a little higher, newborn stabilization unit. So we may have phototherapy, we may have warmer, we may have IV fluids here. And SNCU is a proper sick newborn care center where now we need to actually train the healthcare providers in provision of CPAP also, and also phototherapy and antibiotics. So all these things are in addition to NBSU. So one needs to be uh, having a timely referral and integrated care at all these levels. So as I talk about integration, not only with the community and the facility, you need to integrate with the adults, the environment, and a lot of other things. So uh, just read up about the antibiotic stewardship, which is not standalone for adults or PICU or adult ICU or in fact any care center. We need to be very, very, very well aware of this stewardship program and uh, antibiotic resistance. So this is a very, very uh, relevant topic to newborns. So just uh, we should be aware of this program also. Swachh Bharat mission is, we all know the hospitals have now have to follow a biomedical waste management. 
So, and Kaya Kalp is one such initiative which is being taken under the sanitation uh, programs. Climate change and human health in general, because that contributes to not only multiple drug resistance, but also a lot of communicable diseases and viral illnesses. National program for prevention of blindness and visual impairment that is very, very relevant, especially for preterm babies, ROP screening that comes under this umbrella. Prevention and control of deafness, it comes under the actually hearing screening. So now coming to the, how do we actually monitor our data and how do we collect the baseline data? So there are a lot of uh, uh, surveys happening and these are the key ones. Sample registration survey. If you just click on the Google, you will see that who conducts it. The National Registrar, the Registrar General of India conducts the sample registration survey. National Family Health Survey is a lot more broader one, which actually looks at the uh, household uh, details also. How many of them have actually gas cylinder? How many have them indoor pollution and all? Everything is integrated into it. Then the health ministry also releases health and family welfare statistics periodically. So last was released in 2019-20. It is also openly available. You can just go through the data if you get time. And of course, globally, we have WHO and UNICEF, which keeps on giving country-wise data to us. Okay, so these are the uh, national uh, demographic data. So the last which has come up is uh, in 2019-20, the National Family Health Survey and FHS 5, which is there. So as per NHS, uh, NFHS 5, you should remember where our country stands now. So the total neonatal mortality is 24.9. And in 2015, last NFHS 4 came in 2014 or uh, 15. So it was 29.5. You see 24.9 is the neonatal mortality and the infant mortality is 35. So how much is the contribution? Plus under 5 is 41.9%. So it has reduced in the last five years and it does it does give and based on this we again as i showed you the projection the projected reduction so where are we are we doing right where are the implementation challenges so those are things so sr is more of uh, uh, vital statistics and mortality and uh, uh, vital indicators and as i said nfhs is overall family health survey so it gives a lot of other informations also about the household so SRS, uh, as per the SRS also, we get the under five mortality rate, the infant mortality rate, rural, urban and total, early neonatal mortality rate, late neonatal, what is early neonatal mortality rate, you should remember that, the first seven days of life. So that's how, those are, uh, the causes are different in the early neonatal mortality versus late neonatal mortality. Late neonatal mortality are mostly community and the healthcare associated causes. Then post neonatal mortality, the baby may have got discharged at one and a half month or so, but then many of them die because of the neonatal related complications. Then perinatal mortality rate, which is combination of stillbirth plus uh, uh, early neonatal mortality rate, and then stillbirth rate also, it is given in the SRS. So just have a glance at that because ultimately we have to link the programs with this. So I just wanted to give you a picture that SRS module and the SRS document is there. We can share it with you in the groups also, in the group, uh, whichever participant groups. Uh, it gives uh, state-wise uh, mortality rates and also gives neonatal death as a percentage of infant deaths. So this gives an idea that how much the neonatal mortality is contributing to the infant mortality. You should know also about the certain acts. The MTP, MTP Act has been modified recently. So one should know that uh, what is the now uh, extended gestation limit who can be uh, authorized to give the consent for medical uh, termination of pregnancy and what is the breach, um, punishment for breach. So you see now if the gestation limit is extended to 24 and even beyond that, if there are fetal abnormalities. So there is a medical board which is there, which takes the decisions and now it can take decisions even beyond 24 weeks of gestation. <clears throat> this is a very important act. Just read about that. And BPNI is uh, the Breastfeeding Promotion Network of India. And it actually takes initiative in ensuring that uh, none of the uh, companies which actually manufacture the infant milk substitutes, they should be a part of academic activities and they should not be influencing the uh, healthcare providers. 
So remembering the BPNI, there are a lot of alliances which are there, Healthy Newborn Network, Helping Babies Breathe, World Breastfeeding Alliance, the KMC Foundation, the Kid Drop, Neonatal Resuscitation Program in itself is a big program. And it has gone a long way in reduction of uh, mortalities in a lot of states. Then we have ICMR, which is collaborating in providing the standard treatment protocols. And of course, uh, Breastfeeding Hospital Initiative. Nowadays, they are providing certificates also to the institutes who are actually uh, ensuring that exclusive breastfeeding is given. So read about the new advances, innovations, uh, uh, like Kidrop now. Uh, Kidrop utilizes the red cam. What is red cam? Red cam is a, a camera which takes pictures from the retina and these can be sent to an expert ophthalmologist to actually stage the ROP from distance also. So this is one of the uh, programs, Kidrop, and it's use, it uses an innovation, uh, innovative solution. Uh, this red cam shuttle was actually a US uh, uh, manufactured and three netra is again one upcoming, I think, uh, Karnataka is again leading in uh, manufacturing that. Three Netra is also similar to RedCam. It can take pictures, uh, high quality pictures from the retina and uh, properly trained unitologist can also perhaps take and then send it to an ophthalmologist. Also remember that there are a lot of uh, online monitoring systems which are there in the health programs and the government of India. And MCTS, Maternal and Child Health Tracking System is one of that. And it pro, it actually monitors a lot of programs. Also, a quiz for you that you should remember some of the days and the importance and the themes of that year. So it gives a general good impression that yes, you are aware of the uh, uh, motivations and the promotions which are occurring related to newborn. So World Breastfeeding Week, World Prematurity Day, Newborn Week, <clears throat> Immunization Week, Hand Hygiene Day, Nutrition Week and Universal Health Coverage Day. So some of these I have mentioned. Uh, I hope I have not uh, bored you all uh, too much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, thing. End it here. Thank you, ma'am. That's an elaborative session. <clears throat> Over to you, ma'am. Yeah.